let's start off in broad brush it, man. You know, yeah. you look at a contest where Michigan had double digit lead twice, up 33 to 30 late with a chance to to maybe put it away uh, and they weren't able to give me your your broad stroke, your broad brush. Well, I mean, I think a lot of the things we've talked about all year finally came to a head and kind of bit us, right? Because uh, we finally played a, game, a team that's evenly matched and, and, and very talented. And our team came out and played, right? Michigan came out and played very well, but a lot of the same things that we weren't able to, you know, sure up or capitalize on during the season where it's just like, okay, at some point, right, at some point, we're not going to be able to get away with this. We are not going to continue to get away with just kicking field goals. That's not something that we can do, especially when we're playing a team, because I told you at some point our defense is going to meet their match. And even though they played extremely well, right, they played extremely well, they have a running back that's a Heisman candidate. He's a talented runner, and I didn't think so. I, I thought he was a fraud, to be honest. I didn't think that he was like this. I thought he was pretty good, but as far as Heisman and all that, I didn't do it. He, has his, he had his Heisman moment because there were a number of times where we had him completely stopped completely stopped and he found a way to get to the cutback he found a way to jump cut and find the open space because in every defense especially in the run game and in the pass game there are openings right you can get you can run but you have to find those openings he found it every single time and then he hit his head on the goal balls a number of times i mean he was outstanding that was his heisman moment probably won't win the heisman but that was his heisman moment and, and it was impressive to watch and we settled for field goals period we settled for field goals. Now, there are other things that happened during the game that we can point to. That four-point swing that I've heard many people talk about, that's real. Like, well, that's not an excuse. There are, there are excuses and there are reasons. That's not an excuse. This game should have gone in overtime, and the referee stole that opportunity. If, if it was going to be that, if we were going to give up a lead, we should have been able to go into overtime, right, and let these two teams duke it out. You insert the referees into a situation where it's very clear the call on the field stays unless you have – proof full video evidence it's not oh i kind of think oh i assume it has to be visual evidence that that call was wrong and it goes both ways right we've seen it happen where a touchdown is called not a touchdown maybe it was but we caught on the field and we can't prove it or a touchdown is called a touchdown and we can't like i don't i just can't understand how that was an option it happened we should have responded and we shouldn't kick so many field goals right that's the end stop kicking field goals and getting the end zone Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I, you talk about Kenneth Walker and the success he had in this game, you know, for for the first two and a half quarters, the yards he got, I just felt like we're all him to your point. Yeah, yeah. It, play is about it. Even you look at his first touchdown. I thought not only did they get destroyed up front, there was a, a blocking bust a missed assignment seemed to me by Michigan State up front as well. He cuts it back against the grain. Granted, Michigan had some. A uh, poor pursuit. Your safety didn't leverage the football. He gets all the way outside, Devin, and scores yeah. a touchdown. He was doing that time and time again. But the last quarter and a half, people don't realize this. Through three quarters, Michigan was outrushing Michigan State. Yeah. Through three quarters. They were. Yeah. But you look at the last, say, 16, 17 minutes uh, of the game where he, he really went off. He wasn't making cuts. Uh, he wasn't cutting back against the grain. It was one cut and go, uh, Devin. Yeah. And I I got to give Michigan State or from a from a coaching perspective credit for that, that they would go. They get a first down. They go tempo and time and time again. It seemed like they were catching Michigan out of position. And Kenneth yeah. Walker was benefiting on those run plays as a result. Oh, well, without question, guys not ready. That was something I could not understand. I mean, because they did it early in the first quarter, which I, I can understand because we do a lot of substitution, things like that. But later in the game, it continued to happen. No excuse for that. We cannot be substituted. We see what they're trying to do. And it's smart by their coaches, right? They've seen that Michigan loves to substitute, especially when you get in those situations. They want to switch guys out. And they exploited it. And not only did they get flags, they got big yards because guys just weren't ready. That wasn't. There's no excuse for that. But when you're a good back, you wear on a defense, right? And, and the defense just they, – they didn't have anything left, right? Like you said, like late in the game, he continued to get stronger and stronger during that game. And it's, it's kind of demoralizing, right? I've never, I've never played defense at that level, but I know what time it is. Like when you just can continue to run the ball and 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 in the beginning you're stopping him and he's still finding the way, right? That's demoralizing for defense. And then he gets to the end. It's like, I'm out of gas.